Is my fender a fake? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So a little while ago I bought a Fender Made in Mexico uh, Stratocaster from a local music shop. And uh, one of the things that always kind of goes through my mind when buying a name brand uh, guitar secondhand is, is it really that name brand or is it a fake or is it a copy or is it a parts caster made with you know genuine parts um, is it an actual fender or gibson or or what have you so i went into this shop because i wanted a made in mexico fender so that i could compare a more expensive guitar to the cheaper chinese made guitars that i was uh, reviewing and so I uh, went into this local shop, just a small mom and pop type shop. It's actually got a frame, you know, photography and frame shop in with the, the music gears. So that gives you an idea of, uh, of how small it is. And, the, and most shops like that specialize in used gear. So I was walking around looking, he had a lot of D'Angelico's and, and Squires and things like that. And I was really looking for a made in Mexico and I didn't see anything, so I was just about to leave and I uh, had walked into the because there were a couple of different rooms and I walked into this area where the counter was and then uh, turned to leave and saw this fender on a stand on top of the, the counter and so I quick looked at it and and it had the maiden it had the Mexico uh, serial number on the back and it looked like a legit uh, strat you know, made in Mexico Strat to me. And the price was pretty decent. It was six something, six, maybe six and a half. And uh, I knew that the brand new made in Mexico fenders were about 650. Uh, a lot of them go on sale. I know they're upwards of 800 uh, retail, but I thought, okay, it's a pretty good compromise. It's, a, it's an older guitar, it was from 2018. I could tell from the serial number. And uh, I thought, okay, you know, even though it's about the price of a new one, it's still new enough and it was in mint condition. And so I'm kind of trying to help support a local business. So then I got it home and uh, started to notice some things that were a little odd about it. So then that made me think, uh-oh, did I get a knockoff or a, or a copy or is this a parts caster that uh, somebody had put together with uh, a made in Mexico neck. So uh, let's kind of dig deep into this and uh, investigate. So maybe this will give you some clues and some advice about uh, if you happen to be buying a used uh, Fender or name brand guitar and you want to make sure that you're not getting something that uh, isn't authentic. So let's get started. Okay, so here is the guitar in question. Uh, this is a 2018 uh, Fender Stratocaster. Now, an interesting thing, and, and this was something that I didn't know because I don't, you know, I don't follow brands religiously, so I don't know, you know, all the model revisions and things like that that they go through. <clears throat> so, but I can tell, you know, by reading the serial so number what year it is and I can you know I can kind of tell certain things so the first thing I noticed was the headstock logo is a little different looking it's uh, so I don't know what era that logo is from I just know that it's not the sort of the typical logo that you see and that it didn't have the F on the back of the neck plate but the bent steel saddles are Fender uh, branded and the um, tuners are also, they also say Fender. But there's something different about the tuners too, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so everything on it seemed okay. And then this one says special edition. It's got a sticker on the, on the back of the headstock that says special edition. And this is the sort of a seafoam green. And then another thing I noticed was that the uh, 
trim block is brass. And I'm pretty sure that's not stock to fender. I think they definitely use steel or maybe even aluminum. Uh, not sure. So, so I thought, well, maybe somebody had maybe modified that. So of course, the first thing you do when you get it home is you check on the serial number. So the first thing I did was check out the serial number. And I go to the serial number lookup.fender.com and uh, enter in the serial number. and I got no results. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this isn't a genuine Fender, it just means that this particular uh, guitar is not in the database, who knows why. Um, so that kind of made me nervous. So then I started looking at other models of this particular Fender because uh, the place I got it from labeled it as a Fender player uh, model. And there's nothing on the, on the headstock or whatever that says player or standard or whatever. And I didn't know there was a difference. Uh, I always thought that it was just Fender player was the made in Mexico version. And so uh, I started looking up Fender player uh, guitars and and you get the you know the newer guitar with the you know the spaghetti string uh, logo I think that's what they call it and uh, and then it's these also have a two-point trim on them and so I started to get a little more nervous because I couldn't find the uh, a guitar with that style logo on it from that that date so I was googling 2018 Fender player and I was having a real tough time <laughs> identifying this guitar so I was getting nervous so I was getting more nervous because I'm thinking man this thing is not something's not right about it so then uh, in the video that I did about the you know this guitar compared to the the cheaper Chinese guitars I had people telling me, oh, well, that's a standard, or that's a Fender standard, and it's got ceramic pickups on it and the six screw trim and, and whatnot. Well, I knew it didn't have ceramic pickups on it. They're El Nico because they're staggered pull pieces, and when I took it all apart, uh, there was no magnets on the back. And so I'm like, what is this guitar? So, <laughs> so I think I figured out the mystery and uh, so this is kind of what I've, I've, I've come up with. Oh, and, and then that's another thing. The, the tuning keys on it, you know, the, the tuning, the button, the, the actual knob that you turn, look almost like the, the vintage Butterbean style tuning knobs instead of what they're supposed to look like, which is that. So then that made me wonder what is going on too, because but it but they are stamped Fender on on the housing, but that you know that doesn't necessarily mean anything because you know that stuff can be can be faked. Okay, so then knowing that this was that what people were calling this a Fender standard, then I was able to uh, do a Google search for a Fender standard. And then here we have a picture of basically what looks like my guitar uh, with the, the black logo with the gold outline, which is the fatter logo, and the six screws and whatnot. And then I found some other uh, Fender standards, and they didn't have the F on the back uh, neck plate either. So that kind of made me feel a little better. <laughs> And then realized that the locking tuners uh, that Fender makes have that vintage, or well, some of them, some uh, 
models of, of the locking tuner have that smaller uh, button on it. And it's not exactly the same as the Butterbean because they're more flat. These are more oval shaped, but they're fatter. So then I took, I took the, uh, this guitar apart, found that, you know, that the neck had a date stamp on it from January of 2018. And the abbreviation for the date is the Spanish version of January. And then there's some barcodes and things like that inside the body that kind of made me think that, okay, this is, this is legitimate. And then there was a interesting little decal inside the body with the Fender F on it, which I've never ever seen uh, a Fender with that in it before, <laughs> which is kind of interesting because, you know, there's usually nothing on the body itself to identify it as uh, a true Fender. So then, because I opened it up to look at the pickups, I discovered that on the pickups, it had the number 59 written on them in like a wax pencil. And so I Googled that and come to find out you can buy a preloaded pick guard with what are called Pure Vintage 59 uh, pickups in it. They're Il Nico pickups. And so, and this kind of fits, you know, it looks the same. Mine doesn't have this stamp or barcode on it, but it's the same sort of antique white pick guard. And it's got the cloth wiring in the, in the big pots and the treble bleed and all that stuff. And so what I think happened is somebody bought the Fender Standard that had uh, ceramic pickups in it in the regular tuning buttons and, uh, you know, the, the regular trim block in it and they modified it. So they, they bought the, uh, you know, that loaded pick guard and put it in which the loaded pick guard itself is, is around $300, $299. And then they changed the, not the buttons on the uh, tuning keys, maybe because, you know, those are smaller. So, you know, maybe. And then the brass trim block is also you know, an upgrade. So I'm pretty confident I got an actual made in Mexico Fender Stratocaster and not like a parts caster made with Fender parts. And I'm very, very confident that it's not a, uh, a knockoff or a, or, or a forgery or copy. So anyway, that's sort of been my experience with this guitar. And coming to find this out actually makes me feel a little bit better about what I paid for it because of the upgraded El Nico pickups. Because like I said, that uh, loaded pick guard is $299. Uh, <laughs> so that right there, I mean, if they had bought this guitar, you know, brand new in 2018, I my guess is it would have been, you know, upwards of $600 uh, for the guitar itself and then throwing in another almost $300 and then not to mention a brass trem block has got to be 50 or 60 bucks probably and then I don't know what the deal is with those tuners so all said and done the upgrades on this guitar would have probably pushed uh, the actual price of that guitar over $1,000. So I feel like I got a pretty good deal on it, but again, I was you know trying to support this uh, local shop, and I wanted a guitar that I could just take home and 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 use. I mean, I know Amazon shipping is <laughs> pretty fast; you can get you can get stuff pretty quickly these days. But I thought, what the heck, I'll get it so I can use it for my comparisons. And so now I'm thinking that if I go to sell this particular guitar. I may even 
you know, I may be able to get my money back from it because of of the upgrades for it. Maybe even part it out. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that because I've I've got uh, my eyes on an American uh, made Fender Stratocaster uh, because I would really like to keep doing comparisons uh, with more expensive guitars uh, within reason. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to share that with everybody. I thought it was an uh, interesting experience. Um, I guess the moral of the story is if you're going to buy a, a used uh, name brand guitar, uh, know what you're looking at. Um, I suppose I could have, you know, I could have sat there in the store and, and, you know, searched for the serial number and, and did some of the investigation right there in the store, but it was kind of, it was kind of an impulse buy. And, uh, you know, I saw it sitting there on the counter. I'm like, Hey, that's the made in Mexico. And I just kind of grabbed it and took it up front and paid for it and walked out with it so <laughs> so there you go don't uh, don't be like me uh, maybe look at uh, what you're you're buying before you're you're buying it and I know it's harder when you're buying used gear online say from reverb or something because uh, you're basing it just off a of photograph I mean you can you can send a message to the seller and ask them questions and everything and you can you can do your research on like serial number and and headstock logo and things like that before you buy it but uh, you're also not you know physically holding it to kind of get an idea of how it feels because you know uh, the knockoffs and the copies are they just have a kind of a different feel to them so anyway again thanks for tuning in uh, and we'll see you next time here on Jay Allen guitar <laughs>